Good evening, boys and girls. Well, Mr. Ash, what are we going to show to all those nice people today? Well, let's show off some of the big ticket items that came in the mail. Now, some of you guys, uh, you probably either had this item uh, when it was first in its initial print run, uh, and then other people, like myself, got it a little later. Uh, but the wait is finally over. It is the Midsummer 4K Special Edition of the uh, Director's Cut. It's the full kit and caboodle, I guess. Um, to be honest, I did not see the original version of Midsummer, but I heard that the Director's Cut was, well, not only being quite a bit longer, but I guess it's supposed to be better. I don't know. Uh, I wanted to see it, but you know, circumstances prevailed such that, you know, I didn't see it, but, uh, the original theatrical cut was not released on 4K, but this one is, and, uh, it comes in this really large packaging. To be honest, I know very little about it other than it's sort of like a, see, he's, he's climbing on shit behind the camera. <sighs> see, he thinks everything is a climbable surface, um, but, I don't know a whole lot about it other than uh, I think it's supposed to be kind of like, you know, the Wicker Man or something, uh, having to do with, like, cults and paganism and shit. I don't really know, to be honest, because, to be, and I'll, again, being perfectly honest, I was not really blown away by Hereditary, which was Ari Aster's previous film, but I also saw it, oh, this is neat, so it's got, like, it looks like a storybook, kind of, it's got all kinds of neat illustrations in it, um, and it's got, oh, look at that, it's a, uh, it is a, uh, foreword here by Martin Scorsese, how cool is that, um, anyway, point is, I remembered not being all that blown away by Hereditary, partially because I'm not all that blown away by Rosemary's Baby, even though, objectively, I think it's good, and I would even argue Hereditary is, you know, is good in a similar way, it's just, I don't know what it is, but there is something about both films that just doesn't really intrigue me or doesn't appeal to me, but I keep feeling like I'm missing something with both of them, and they're ones that I gotta rewatch, even though, like, objectively I know that they're very good. I just, uh, I don't know what it is. You know how there are some movies that just, for whatever reason, they don't really, they just don't do it for you? Well, Hereditary was that way for me. Uh, at least at first, but I imagine that I would enjoy it more upon rewatching, and I do have it in the collection on 4K, so I am intent on rewatching it. But my, I think I'll do that, and then I'll pop in Midsummer. Um, and uh, but I just figured if I'm gonna watch it, I might as well watch the whole, the whole kit and caboodle, and on 4K and with a cool, cool uh, specialized packaging, which this is. Uh, in limited quantities from A24's uh, website. Uh, it's not otherwise easy to get. Uh, now, I know that the director's cut was released like in the UK and other European countries before this, but this is a little bit more exclusive. So yeah, did you guys see Midsummer? Did you like it? Did you see Hereditary? Did you like it? Um, again, I gotta reevaluate. And it's funny because Ari Aster's come out in about the same um, kind of horror community, horror uh, ethos as Robert Egger, who I really love, uh, who did The Witch and did The Lighthouse, and I love those. Like, those really got me. You know, you know how, like, some things appeal to you in a certain way and other things maybe not as much? Well, The Witch and The Lighthouse, oh, they got me. They got me real good. Um, and would that be the end of the party? Absolutely not, because the other big ticket hotly anticipated item is uh the dawn of the dead zavi exclusive um big 4k set here and on the back it says uh the ultra hd disc one is the theatrical cut ultra hd disc two the extended can cut and then uh ultra hd disc three the argento cut blu-ray disc four all the special features it's got, oh yeah, I forgot, it's got the audio CD disc 1, the Goblin soundtrack, audio CD disc 2, a D-Wolf library compilation part 1, audio CD disc 3, a D-Wolf 
library compilation part two. It's got all kinds of wacky shit in it. And I've deliberately left it sealed because I wanted to show it off to all of you. So let's dive in, shall we? Um, now, Dawn of the Dead, I saw for the first time when the pandemic first hit because I was diving into all of the various uh, zombie movies that I had never seen. And I did that because, well, you know, pandemic times, you got to do your research on what could be coming down the pipeline as far as how a uh, pandemic condition could progress. Now, to be fair, the Romero zombies, it was never really explained as to why the dead were rising and exactly, you know, what it was. Like, the implication, at least in the first film, the uh, Night of the Living Dead, the implication was always that, uh, you know, that the dead were rising because of, like, a uh, meteor or radiation or something like that. Nowadays, uh, largely thanks to 28 Days Later, but a few precursors like um, Rabbit and things like that, nowadays zombies are largely uh, pandemic virus oriented, not as supernatural, even though uh, we do get some of those too. But Dawn of the Dead, it came out, um, you know, uh, 10 years after Night of the Living Dead. Almost nothing to do with uh, Night of the Living Dead other than the idea of the dead rising. That's really all it is. Um, if the camera's shaking, it's because Ash is climbing around on the little crate that I have this stand on, or the little tripod. But anyway, um, 10 years after the first one, very little in connection with... Uh, with the first one, and in fact, the Romero zombie films that he did, they have almost nothing to do with each other other than the dead rise. That's really all they have to do with each other. Um, now, to be fair, Land of the Dead has a character from this film that makes a cameo appearance, but it's kind of a, if you blink, you miss it, and if you even know it. Otherwise, it just doesn't mean much. The only one that has a direct connection to anything is uh, Survival of the Dead, is a direct sequel to Diary of the Dead, despite it not being a found footage film like Diary of the Dead was. But that's really all they have in common. So I kind of hesitate to even call it a series, but I've organized it on my shelf that way. But what all do we have here? We have a book here with this beautiful cover. Look at that. Um, now, again, this was a Zavi exclusive. It's region-free. Um, okay, so this looks like it's the novelization because uh, it's novel form. I kind of wondered if it would be that or if it would be a uh, screenplay format, but it looks like it's the novelization. Um, yeah, so classic horror uh, inspired genre, blah, blah, blah. So George A. Romero and Susanna Sparrow, an introduction by Simon Pegg, copyright 1978. Uh I believe that this was a novelization, uh, that it must have come out concurrently with the film. Any experts can help me out on that. And, uh, we got this beautiful fold-out artwork here, and these discs that are just falling right the hell out. Don't you hate it when that happens? Um, and what all do we have? We've got a bunch of different things. Now, this is from Second Sight, uh, that is the, uh, the company that released this, and part of, so the, in the U.S., we had only had that one, uh, Anchor Bay release all the way back in, like, whatever that was, 2007, um, that was the only one that we had in the U.S., and it was only the U.S. theatrical cut, that was all it had, um, was very bare bones, um, now I had the Arrow release of it, which was kind of hard to find, uh, I had that one. That was a UK exclusive. I actually mailed it to a friend of mine um, as a present because I knew that this was coming out. And this has all those discs, like I mentioned, all these different cuts in 4K and special features set there. Uh, now, the Ultra HD discs, obviously, they're region-free because, well, that's what Ultra HD discs do. Beautiful artwork there. They really went above and beyond with this. And then, uh, what else do we have? We have um, some more stuff here and more discs that are falling right the hell out. And I believe that this is all the CDs, yes. Um, so we have original soundtrack by Goblin, a D-Wolf library compilation, 
part one and part two. So these, I guess, are all the different sounds and things like that, or other, uh, other, because again, the, the different cuts of the film, they had different soundtracks. So good that they were able to adequately represent that. <laughs> he's jump, he's jumping around like he's a crazy man. He thinks he's Tarzan or something. And then we got, uh, Dissecting the Dead with some more beautiful artwork there. And, uh, this is another booklet. It's a hardcover. Looks like a lot of, you know, making of information and things like that. If you're a fan of Dawn of the Dead, this is definitely the set that you need to have. And, uh, all the different cuts and information thereof. Um, I'll be honest, like, I think it, it wasn't my favorite of the Dead films. Like, obviously, I love Night of the Living Dead. Um, I love, um, I kind of like Day of the Dead a little bit more than this, um, even though I like Dawn of the Dead quite a bit. This film, I think, definitely had it in terms of the satire, the social satire, because um, there's a lot of great commentary about consumerism and about you know, corporatization of America via shopping malls and, you know, things like that. Um, Day of the Dead is great. I really liked Land of the Dead. Not everybody did, but I liked the large scale of it. And Diary of the Dead was kind of not so great, but I I respected where he was coming from, but I don't think it was executed as well as it could have been. And then Survival of the Dead was all right. Like, it was probably the weakest of the bunch, but this is a great, great set. Um, a lot of you, I'm sure, will have taken a dip. Uh, now, this was like about $100 or something. I pre-ordered it like back in May or something, and it only came recently. So that just tells you how long it took to come out and also how long it took to get here. Because I think it came out in the UK a little... like the, the Their UK copies got shipped out a little bit before our US ones did. And even then, mine took abnormally long to get here, but I'm glad that it did. Um, now, that should be the end of the party, right? No, it is not, because we have a few bullshit bonuses to show off. Now, I did not really splurge with Black Friday shopping, because, again, I have another mouth to feed, and I have to be a responsible adult as a result, but, um, I did partake in one thing that was like fifteen dollars and it's cheaper than it normally would be which is the godfather trilogy the coppola restoration but it came in like a standard case and it didn't have any slip boxes or anything cool about it so what i did was i printed off these custom covers for the films there's godfather one godfather t uh two and three and uh if you look on the inside here this is what it normally looks like right there, but it was just that. It was no slipcover or anything cool. And I didn't want to spend too much on the Godfather films because, well, you know, I, I love them, obviously. They're, you know, Coppola classics. They're American classics. You got to have them. I kind of held off on them because I kept expecting, like, a 4K box set or, like, some kind of super-duper box set to come out. And as of this recording, it has not. Uh, the only thing that is coming out, which I'll be able to grab, there is, it's called the Godfather Coda, um, whatever it's called, the Godfather Coda, the death of Michael Corleone, which is, uh, instead of being called the Godfather Part 3, because the whole controversy with Godfather Part 3 was that it was never really intended to be a real part three. It was meant to be more of an epilogue to the story. And they called it part three, I guess, because of, you know, trying to give it all nice and neat as a trilogy. But it really was not meant to be a true part three. It was meant to be more of an epilogue. And so with uh, it being called the Godfather Coda, the death of Michael Corleone, it's truer to uh, Francis Ford Coppola's original vision, and I guess it's re-edited and all that stuff, because that seems to be what he's doing these days, is doing a lot of re-edits of his movies with the, the quote-unquote final cut of Apocalypse Now. Um, but yeah, th this is the original cut, and I'll be able to put it alongside the other one, uh, once it comes out. But I figured it was too long me for me not to have the Godfather films in my collection, because obviously they're cornerstones of American cinema and they're, you know, highly beloved and everything like that. 
I'll be honest though, they're not my favorite gangster films because I'm I'm in the minority as far as like I love the fact that Goodfellas, for example, like I felt like Goodfellas was better because with Goodfellas they were able to communicate some of like the fun, appealing aspects of why someone maybe would want to be a gangster, but then underneath that very quickly they establish the fact that these people are violent, bloody killers and they're generally psychopathic and yeah, you know, there's most of it is very not fun and not really like all, you know, romanticized and honorable like these films tend to be. Now again, they're great films in and of themselves, highly recommend them, but I know that people that, you know, know a lot about like mafia behavior and history and stuff, like if you really dig down deep into it, you know, people that are in that lifestyle are just fucking killers and, you know, horrible people. Uh, which is not to say that they're not horrible people here, it's just that, you know, something like Goodfellas even does a better job of communicating that. But anyway, uh, you, you had to have one before you could have the other. And then at Second and Charles, I managed to do some trade-in credit, and I took advantage of their buy two, get one free sale, which is part of their whole Thanksgiving weekend. I did not splurge, I just used my credit, so I didn't get anything too crazy. Or did I? Because... Paradise Hawaiian style there with Elvis Presley. Uh, this, out of all the Elvis Presley movies, this one is one of the hardest ones to find uh, because for whatever reason, I guess maybe because it goes out of print or has gone out of print, you know, several times, this has tended to command some rather outrageous prices on Amazon and everything. So I don't know why, but I managed to find it for like $3 or something. I was like, well, I got to go with that. I'm going to try to get the rest of Elvis's filmography in the collection because he has like 30, whatever it was, 32, 33 films. Um, could forget, I don't know if that's the right number, but it's something like that, uh, plus like two concert films. So, yeah. Uh, but because I got it for cheap. And then also I uh, got uh, Stan Lee's Lightspeed, which was a later period Stan Lee superhero concoction, which... He's only credited as executive producer, not as a writer, but, you know, this was in his later period where he was just attaching his name to some things, I assume, to kind of try to keep his legacy alive in some kind of current day ventures, uh, but yeah, that one was like $2. And then, last but not least, this movie called Sundown, The Vampire in Retreat with Bruce Campbell and David Carradine, Morgan Brittany, Jim Metzler... Uh, I've heard, I, I had never heard of this movie, and then I just randomly stumbled upon it, and I was like, what's this? You know, it's got Bruce Campbell, and it's looks like a kind of ridiculous horror film, and apparently it's got kind of a cult following now, so we'll have to check it out, but that's a cool cover, isn't it? No Blu-ray release, uh, but anyway, that's all I really got to show you. Uh, as you can see, my hands are full with raising a, you know, growing young man here. But uh, we got ourselves some Dawn of the Dead action to show him, as well as some Midsummer Director's Cut action to show him when I'm not showing him Godfather or, you know, Elvis or whatever, because, you know, that's what you do when you're a parent. You watch, you show your kids a bunch of fucked up R-rated movies. Uh, but anyway, did you guys uh, order any of those items, or did you guys go nuts with uh, Black Friday shopping? This is probably the least nuts I've gone with Black Friday stuff uh, in a while, but, you know, didn't expect to have him show up in my life, and he's biting my knee. So anyway, if you like this, then please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, set phasers to stun, warp factor 5, I will see you in the next video. Hopefully I'll have some more cool stuff to show you.